Sections 2.2 and 2.3 are about linear equations and slope. So before we get started, we're going to think about what really is a linear equation. Well, a linear equation is just an equation with two variables, usually y and x, and it only has the four basic operations, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. And there's not any variables multiplied together, or there's not any variables in the denominator. So if you look over on the left, you'll see in a normal equation, 2x plus 3 equals y, um, x equals 2, y equals 3 fourths x minus 2. That's what a linear equation is. And if you look at nonlinear, or the ones that are not linear over here on the right, and we have squares, x squared, that's a power, well, that's not linear. We have a square root, that's not one of the four basic operations, so that's not linear. We have a variable in the denominator, right there. Um, that's not linear. And then we have two variables multiplied together. So these are the four cases where you're not going to have linear equation. Anything other than these, usually we're going to look at it's linear. So when you see something like y equals or, you know, and you get 2x plus 3, um, that's a linear equation. And, and it's linear because it forms a line. We also have linear functions. And a function is just an operation that maps an input to an output. So that's saying like um, if I put in a number for x, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a number out for y. That's a function. And we'll talk more about this later. Um, but when you go from you know, a difference between a linear equation and a linear function, um, a function is when you deal with the actual coordinates, like a coordinate pair x comma y. So an equation is you know, y equals 2x plus 7. The function would be f of x equals 2x plus 7. That means that if I plug in a value for x, I'm going to get out a value for y. So y is a function of x. Y depends on what x is. Because if I plug in some number for x, I'm going to get a number out for y. If I plug in a different number for x, I'm going to get a different number for y. Therefore, y depends on x. Y is a function of x. So we say f of x instead of y equals. And here are some um, popular... I was like popular, but uh, more frequently used functions. Um, B of t, this is a position function. So this is if you're throwing a ball in the air and you're trying to figure out where it's going to land and all that stuff. That's what, this, that's what you would use right here. And then f of x equals sine x. That's a function for um, trigonometry. So next we're going to look at standard form of linear equations. And we have standard form for a reason. It's also called intercept form, and that's because you can quickly find out the intercepts um, of a line. When a line, when you graph a line, you can quickly figure out where the intercepts are, and you only need two points to graph a line. So if you find out the x-intercept and the y-intercept, you can connect those two points to make the line. So just real quick, you know, an x-intercept, what it, is it actually? Well, x-intercept is when the line crosses the x-axis. And if you think about a graph, you know, you look at your, your quick graph here and you say, well, when my line crosses the x-axis, what is the coordinate value at that point? Well, you might not know what the x is, but you know what the y is for sure. Anytime you cross the x-axis or anytime you have an x-intercept, your y is always equal to zero. Always. So this is why intercept form is important because if your y is equal to zero and you, know, you have your intercept form like this right here, if your y is equal to zero, then you can immediately just cancel out that term and it's gone and you just have ax equals c. So it's really, it, you can quickly find out what your x-intercept is because now you can you know, easily solve for x. So we use intercept form because we can locate our intercepts and then graph our line really quick with those two points. And y-intercept is, you know, just going by the same example, when the graph crosses the y-axis. And again, same logic, when it crosses the y-axis, if we draw a little graph here, you will see that it crosses the y-axis like this. Right here it crosses the y-axis. I don't know what my y-value is. It's down a little bit. It's going to be negative. But I know for sure what my x-value is. 
and at that point, x is 0. The y-axis actually is the line x equals 0, and the x-axis is the line y equals 0, because on the x-axis, you haven't gone up or down at all. You stayed the same height, 0. And on the y-axis, you haven't moved to the left or the right at all. So y equals, or so um, x equals 0. So let's look at some examples. So we're going to take these two equations, um, and we're going to figure out what our x-intercepts and our y-intercepts are. So the first one, the first one is 3x plus 2y equals 7. So to find out what the x-intercept is, I'm going to plug in 0 for y. So 3x plus, and that just goes to 0, equals 7. So my x-intercept is going to be x, sorry, 3x equals 7, so x equals 7 thirds. That is my x-intercept. Let's down some more. Alright, and to find the y-intercept, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to sub in 0 for x. So this is going to be 0 plus 2y equals 7. So solving for this, I get y equals 7 halves. So they're not pretty, but those are my intercepts. So I could use the points 7 thirds comma 0 and 7 halves. I'm, I'm sorry, not 7 halves comma 0. 0 comma 7 halves. Those are my two points that I can use to graph this line. So let me move this down. So I got space to work here. All right, so now we're looking at the x-intercept on the next equation. This one isn't in standard form. So I'm going to do a little bit of work to get in standard form. And all I'm going to do is take this 4x and move it to the other side. So I'm going to add 4x to both sides. And I'm going to get 4x plus y equals 9. Now that is in standard form. So to find the x-intercept, I sub in 0 for y. So that just leaves me with 4x equals 9. And solving, I get x equals 9 fourths. So my point where it crosses the x-axis is 9 comma, I'm sorry, 9, 4, comma, 0. And now the y-intercept, same thing, except I'm substituting 0 for x now. So let me scroll back up so I can see the equation. All right, so we got 4 times 0 plus y equals 9. Well, that just goes to 0, so I just have y equals 9. So my y-intercept is 9, so the point is 0, comma, 9. Using those two points, I could graph my line. And that's it for linear equations in standard form. We're going to talk about linear equations in other form in the next video. In order to get to talk to those, to talk about those, we have to look at what slope is. So what is slope? So what is slope? Well, you see these different types of graphs and the different you know, uphill, downhill slopes, horizontal slopes, vertical slope. When we talk about slope, we read the graph from left to right, just like we had everything else, just like we do books and our equations and all that good stuff, our inequalities. We're reading these graphs from left to right. So if the graph goes up from left to right, like we're climbing a hill, it's a positive slope. We're going uphill. If it goes down, it's a negative slope. Like we're going downhill. That's negative. If it doesn't change at all, then that slope is zero. It's horizontal. It's perfectly flat. Slope is zero. But if it's straight up and down, we don't know what that slope is. It's impossible to tell what that slope is. It's not a little bit to the left, not a little bit to the right. It's not perfectly horizontal. So we call that slope undefined. And if you look over here to the left, to the right, I'm sorry, we got Mr. Slope guy. Yeah? And it's just a you know, way you can remember. You got your positive slope you know, going up. You got your negative slope going down. And then you can see your undefined slope right here. That's the, the nose, so the U for undefined. And then we have our zero slope. So there's zero and zero, and there's the zero horizontal slope. But slope is actually defined as the rate of change of a graph. How fast is it changing? How fast is it going up? How, how fast is it going down? How shallow is it? So more specifically, we're going to look at the change in y's over the change in x's. You know, how fast is the y changing 
in respect to how fast the x is changing. And we call this rise over run. You've probably heard it before. But anytime we talk about slope, we talk about rise over run. The y's over the x's. And we're going to refer to slope in all of our equations and our formulas. We're going to refer to it as m. m means slope. That's the variable that's designated. I don't know why, but m is slope. So there's an equation to find the slope, and that is m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, if you're given these two points, you know, x1, y1, and x2, y2. But really, what it, what it really is, it's just the difference in y's over the difference in x's. So it doesn't matter which way you put them up there, as long as you're consistent. So if you start with y sub 2 minus y sub 1, you have to do x sub 2 minus x sub 1. You can also do y sub 1 minus y sub 2 and x sub 1 minus x sub 2. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. You just have to be consistent. It's the difference in the numbers. How far apart those numbers actually are. There are some special slopes. Okay, so parallel lines and perpendicular lines have special slopes. Parallel lines, they never touch. They never intersect. So if I draw two lines that are parallel, they never cross. Therefore, they have the same slope. So if I gave you a line and said another line is parallel, those two lines would have the same slope. The only thing that changes with those lines is the y-intercept. So the, the lines would look exactly the same, except they'd have different y-intercepts. Um, perpendicular lines have what we call opposite reciprocal slopes. So if the slope of one perpendicular line is one-third, then the slope of the other would be its opposite, so negative, reciprocal. So I flip it. So one-third becomes three over one, or just three. So that's what it means to be an opposite reciprocal. I changed the sign. In this case, I went from positive to negative, and I flipped the fraction. I went from one-third to three over one, but we don't write three over one. We just write three. So let's do some examples. All right, we're given two points, and we're going to find the slope of the given line. We're going to find the slope of the line given two points. So I'm going to solve this both ways just to show you that it doesn't matter which one you put first. So I'm going to make this my x sub 1 and my x sub 2, and I'm going to make this my y sub 1 and my y sub 2. All that means is that I got one coordinate pair, and we're going to call that coordinate pair number 1, x1 and y1, and I got a second coordinate pair, which we'll call, which we'll call Corner pair 2, x2, y2. That's just standard notation. So I'm going to set this up, my formula. It's going to be m equals, and we're just going to do, the, for the, the first time we're going to do the 2's minus, minus the 1's. So we're going to do y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Let me write, actually, let me write that in red just so you can see it x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Okay, so now we're going to find the slope. i plug them in. So m equals y sub 2 is negative 2 minus y sub 1, which is 3, over x sub 2, which is negative 3, minus 2. So I get negative 5 up top, and I get negative 5 on the bottom. So negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1. My slope equals 1. And now just to show you that it doesn't matter which way you do it, I'll switch them. So I'm going to flip these two numbers. So instead of writing um, y sub 2 minus y sub 1, I'm going to do y sub 1 minus y sub 2 over x sub 1 minus x sub 2. Just to see what I get. So when I plug those in, I get m is equal to y sub 1, which is 3, minus y sub 2, which is negative 2. So that becomes uh, 3 minus negative 2. So we have a double negative. Just be careful about that. And then on the bottom, we're going to have x sub 1, so 2, 
minus a negative 3. Another double negative, which you have to be cognizant about. So this is 3 technically plus 2, and this is 2 technically plus 3. So it's still 5 over 5, which is still 1. So no matter which way you do it, as long as you're looking at the difference between the numbers, you'll get the same answer. All right, let's look at one more example. So I'm not going to color code this one. I'm just going to go straight through it. So I'm going to do M equals, and I'm just going to choose one. Let's do uh, these first. So we're doing the second one first. So 10 minus 7 over negative 1 minus 3. So I did, this is my technically my number that I did first. This is the number I did second. This is the X I did first. This is the X I did second. Just so you can see that. So this becomes 10 minus 7 is 3 over negative 1 minus 3, which is negative 4. So my slope is negative 3 fourths. And just to do it one more time so you can see, if I switch the numbers, I'd have um, 7 minus 10 over 3 minus a negative 1. That's a double negative. 7 minus 10 is negative 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. So I still get negative 3 fourths. Either way. All right. In the last two examples, we're going to look at graphing a line when we're given a point and a slope. Because the easiest way to graph a line is to take a point and then count off the slope. You have to remember, slope is rise over run. So first we're going to go through the point 2, 2. So here's the point 2, 2. And the slope is 3. That means I'm going to go up 3 and over 1. That's really 3 over 1, right? Any number can be written as itself over 1. So we're going to go up 3 and over 1. And we can also go down 3 and back 1 because that's actually negative 3 over negative 1, which is still 3. So we're still keeping our slope the same. So I'm going to connect these dots, and there's our line. Next, we're going to go through point negative 2, negative 1. So negative 2, negative 1. And it says the slope is perpendicular to a line with slope of 2. Well, we know that perpendicular slopes are opposite reciprocals. So the slope of this line that's perpendicular would be negative, and the reciprocal is 1 half. So my slope is negative 1 half. So I'm going to go down 1 and then to the right 2. So down 1 to the right 2, down 1 to the right 2. I can also go up 1 and to the left 2. All right, and we're going to draw this line. There's our line. All right. And that's all there is to it when it comes, when it comes to linear equations and slope. In the next video, we'll talk about arranging linear equations to fit um, different forms so we can graph them faster and so we can find out information faster. And that's going to be you know, point slope and slope intercept form.